Tasha Cooler Roth, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Uh pretty good. My book just came out this month. So Congratulations. It's fun. Yeah. I did Sorry. Alice in Wonderland and Greek mythology and I mashed them together. It ended up being croquet in the underworld with Jason because why not? Why yeah. not? Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. So how about you? Like you've had a very interesting year, I think, of publishing discovery. That's the thing about you. So what have you learned? Oh, what have I not learned? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have learned many things. Uh, we will we will go through it. Uh, so let's talk about my publishing journey this year. So I have had an agent uh, for about four years, and I've written two novels so far. We went on submission with the first one ages ago, didn't sell, wrote a second one. COVID happened, blah, blah, blah. This year, my agent and I parted ways in January, well, yeah, January, early Feb. And so I thought, okay, I know how to write a pitch. I know how to write a novel. Everybody says it's a good novel. I'm going to go out and find more agents. So I... And at the same time, I was working uh, with a woman who wants to write her memoir. So I'm co-authoring it with her. She's telling the story. I'm writing it. So it's sort of like a ghostwriting thing. And I thought, I've got these great books. I've got this, you know, I've, I, I know what I'm doing. So I know how to get an agent. The first couple of times I've had agents, um, I've had multiple offers and things. So, you know, I'm going to go get an agent. So I did. I got an agent in uh, New York for my novels and I got an agent in London for the memoir and uh, I'm still with them so it's um, but we went on submission with both books and they didn't sell and so that then has me now opening up broadening up options I'll let you ask the questions but basically uh, that's where I'm at uh, I'm exploring next steps Ah, okay. So I mean, I can ask a really big question right away and be really mean, but I, I think actually it's the right question to ask you. So we, we've talked offline about some things because I've just, again, I, I don't pretend I know as much about publishing as you, but I've interviewed a lot of people, as you can see, looking up. And when I, one of the things that I've noticed in the last, I think, couple of years, there's a lot more freedom and because of yeah. just the cost of everything for people to kind of establish their own brands. And you do that with your freelancing a lot. And you're very good at it. Thank you. So my, my, my question then is this. So why I, I do, I'm not saying agents aren't useful, but with someone that's done all of this marketing yeah. on her own, yeah. What are you, someone like you, trying to get out of an agent at this point in your career? Yeah, that's a question I've been asking myself. I have to be honest; it's not a clear cut answer. And I think what I've so, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this because when I first started as a journalist, and this was way back in the early two thousands, I was in India. I was nineteen years old. I didn't think anybody would look at me a second time. You know, I didn't have, ta I mean, I, I knew how to write, but I wasn't great. You know, I was just starting. I was 19 years old. Um, I was in India. I had no fantasy of anybody ever giving me a second look. So yes, I was pitching. Yes, I was, you know, wanting to write for big publications, but I never thought that would happen. So what I did in addition to all of that is that I went and started blogging, building my own audience, telling my own stories, and eventually getting good enough for a to be able to pitch them and get commissions, but also for them to find me. I got found by a lot of publications because of the work I was doing and not necessarily the other way around. So it happened both ways. I got better and I started pitching them and breaking in. They saw the work I was doing and came to me. And I have, like you thought, well, why am I not doing that with publishing? And in a sense, now I'm beginning to, but the reason is because, and why I would go traditional or agents, and I've thought a lot about this, and is it's because um, I don't see it as a traditional versus indie model. I see it as where are my readers and how do I get to them, right? That, so, mm -hmm. so when I, I've, I've written eight books for freelancers, uh, writing books, and I have a newsletter for writers, it makes zero sense to me to go the traditional way. I'm going to reach these readers anyway. Why not go to them directly? I'm talking to them every day. Why would I not just talk to them, tell them about my books, have them go buy that, right? And also, I know how these people read. They read on their devices. They're not reading my books 
I mean, I am bringing out print editions, but those are more for reference. The first time they interact with my books, it's as an ebook, it's, it's mm -hmm. online, right? So I know that audience so well, and I know how to reach them. My novels are set in India. They have a sort of literary bent to them. And uh, they're not genre fiction. They're, I, I hate to say literary fiction because that's not what they are. But, you know, you say India, that's the, you know, that's the label. And I have always thought of my ideal reader and thought, where does this person pick up books? And this person goes to a bookstore. This is like a, this is a person who probably reads the New York Times. This is a person who probably looks at the awards lists. And so I have thought if, if I were trying to reach that reader, how do I reach that reader? And there For is sure. only, so far, yeah. there is only one path to reaching that particular reader. Where I'm at now is A, is that necessarily true? Is that my ideal reader? And have their preferences potentially changed or are changing? And do I want to be at the forefront of that change? And two, who's to say there aren't other readers and they're just not being tapped and they're not just being marketed to? So. Okay. So I'm I'm going to throw some of my crazy ideas at you. Because I think do, it's interesting. Please. Yeah. So for my Alice book I just released, I accidentally invented a board game for it. It occurred to me that there is there are venues like, for example, Kickstarter. Now, yeah. right? For example, this doesn't feel like this fits your book, but the point, the reason why it fits mine is I want to do something kind of unique, one of a kind, and fun. And I don't need a lot of people to get invested in that. I just need enough people to get invested in that. Yeah. Right. So it makes sense for me to when I do the physical book of Alice to do it this way because the game is also part of the story and I deliberately designed it that way. So it gets, you create a completely unique publishing reading interactive experience. And that's what, that excites me. I can't do that traditionally. There's that like that though. I, I can't do that. So I'm not even going to try. Right. So, and also if I, if I land, if I land, do this really, really well, um, I won't need them. They'll come to me. That's kind of like I, that. Sound that sounds arrogant, but it's actually it's the no, truth. No, but that that works. That's how it goes sometimes. And yeah. um, do you know what I think? It and again, I've said this before, and I think we've talked about it before as well. Where it it has to be book by book as well. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you can make a sweeping declaration that this is how my career works. And if you write one type of book, that is certainly true. I don't write one type of book. I write nonfiction. I write narrative nonfiction. I write memoir. I write novels. All my novels are different. The first one is nothing like the second. The third one is nothing like the second. The first one, like they're all different. So I like that. I like experimenting. I like playing with different forms, which means that while, yes, the first two novels I've written have had that trajectory of I feel like I still do think traditional would possibly be the better, better, best, oh, sure. better option for them. It doesn't mean that it's the only option, but also they're hybrid models now. And I love that you mentioned Kickstarter because I'm actually thinking of crowdfunding the memoir now. I am actually going that way off. My co-author has a huge audience. Um, mm -hmm. She's really, really loved in her community. We know there are people who are going to support her. So why wouldn't we do that? But I'm not doing it through kickstarter i think i would go through some place like unbound i don't know if you know unbound yeah yeah, yeah i'm i'm aware of it i see okay just the last kickstarter point then we'll move on to some of the other different things yep. we're going to talk about i do think authors there's an opportunity on kickstarter for particularly authors at this moment in time simply because not a lot of authors are exploiting kickstarter to the fullest of their capabilities yep there are challenges to being an author to do this that say a comic for example doesn't have to worry about right yeah. but it's too big of a gold mine to completely ignore and that's and that's and also, it doesn't it. have to be the only thing you can put it on kickstarter once it's published you can put it on amazon you can yeah. you can bring, yeah, yeah, absolutely. it doesn't have to be one or it doesn't have to be exclusive yeah. it can be all of those things and that's where we're going. And that's, that's, and that's where, where we're going. Because you can serialize it, put it yeah. on Kickstarter, have yeah. the serial coming out, have it on Kickstarter. And, and that's one and that's one way. And that's not even mentioned like Patreon or exactly or, or, yeah. right. Like Patreon, which is another good way of doing it. Um yeah. a buddy of mine, Joshua Robinson, before OnlyFans that uh, like kind of backed away from their uh, explicit stuff, 
So that's an opportunity too. And he was right if they were going to move away from the explicit models. Now that they're still fully entrenched in that, it's probably not the right place. But again, there are all these kind of like crowdfunding platforms with different audiences and trying to find, I think one of the biggest challenges as an author is readers are everywhere and there are all kinds of different kind of, like my book is Alice in Wonderland Greek mythology mashup. Well, my fans are going to be people that love Alice in Wonderland, people that yeah. are going to love certain Greek style, certain Greek stories. That's a hard audience to peg down because if you, like it's, it's a more literary audience, but it's like, but I have a base idea of where to start looking mm. to put my book out. It's like, we'll start the Alice in Wonderland crowd and we'll see what this moves towards. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that's the, that's the whole deal. But again, it's understanding who your audience is, which goes to what you're saying, like case by case. I don't think you can make the argument anymore that they're like a book can only be one path. Also, I don't think a book should just be one path. I was going to say exactly yeah. that. I don't think it should anymore. And this is, this is the key problem with traditional publishing is yeah. that they want all the rights to your work, but they don't necessarily want to exploit all those rights. So they want, you know, all technologies invented or not invented potential future technologies and whatever, but that doesn't mean they're going to take advantage of that. You know, it depends on what kind of a deal you get, how much marketing support you have how much money they're making off it. it it becomes difficult if you sell all rights to a publisher which is usually what they want at least in a yes. certain region but then you can't do promotions you can't do collaborations you can't i don't know put it you know sell it as an nft um you know you cannot yeah. take advantage of all these new opportunities that are coming up you can't serialize um Whereas if I publish and I have, you know, I've published my nonfiction, I could go and serialize that today. I could put it in different formats today. I can I can do whatever yeah. I want with it because I don't have to seek permission. And traditional publishing, when a book has been successful, the author has been successful and proven themselves, and it is usually the author proving themselves, um, then once that person has become successful, then publishing will put money in there. But if a book hasn't done well for whatever reason, even if it has the potential, they're not going to bring out audio editions. They're not going to bring out, you mm -hmm. know, foreign right edition, foreign rights editions. They're not going to bring out um, other editions if their limited market has not already stamped it as a, as a success and we all know that markets behave differently a book that did not do well in the u.s could do amazingly well in japan you know that's happened so many times but now with traditional publishing you wouldn't have the opportunity to explore those options because you've sold the rights potentially and they're not going to exploit those rights well it's also it's an interesting thing too because i i had this epiphany about it was funny because my first book was nominated for an award this year. I did like uh, my first Alice book. It was nominated. I didn't win, but I, it was nominated. And it, it kind of occurred to me that, wait a minute, like uh, it, this was. I think one of the biggest things from one of the biggest shifting points for me is what I think one of the things a lot of authors are looking for is like some kind of like award or or or, or some kind of like you know recognition. Validation. For what, yeah, validation, right? And I just realized. I did this on my own. I had yeah. that like, like, but my moments, like I did this on my own. I don't need validation. It's not that I... it is validation, but it's also marketing, right? Like the yeah, awards yeah, are yeah. Get into the people's, if I pub this, and this has been my challenge, um, honestly, is between the decision between indie and traditional is I could, pu re you know, I couldn't publish my novels. I don't know how to reach that audience necessarily um, because the audience, like we talked about at the beginning, this is a very traditional audience at the moment. It, it won't always be that way. And I do feel like we should be at the forefront of that change. But at the moment, that is a traditional audience that looks at newspaper reviews, that trusts traditional media, that is going into bookstores, that is, you know, looking at awards lists. And that's how you get in front of them. So without that, how do you do it? You know, because... I, as an indie, you're not eligible for that stuff. Well, there's, I, I actually have some evil thoughts and ideas, but one of those evil thoughts and ideas is to go to the bookstores directly themselves. I'm not talking about people chains. Although, go for it if that's what you want. But also, like a lot of the indie bookstores. I think, what, I think this is what's happened, I think, with indie publishing. It's almost like it's an important but necessary tier to publishing. It's not the only path, like you said. Traditional is still going to be around, 
Definitely. But, I think, but traditional is now a niche. Yes. That's something like, yeah, yeah it's now completely, completely a niche. It's one so, option. Yeah, it's just an option. And it's a good option. I'm not, yep. by the way, anyone watching, listening to this, I have talked about this a lot. I am not against anyone going for traditional publishing. No, nor am I. I've tried it. I, I still have yeah, my yeah, yeah. If what, my agent is listening what, as what, well. What, what, we're, what we're trying to point out to you, and this is one of the big, one of the cool things why I had her, because we'll talk about the little note she sent in my response, I'm sure, in a minute. But the thing about this is, we've all realized, we've all realized something very important. Traditional publishing is no longer the only way to get in. And sometimes depending on what you're writing, it is not the right way to get in anymore. And and that's key. So yeah. I, I've been having this conversation. I talk to a lot of writers, a lot of authors, many of them who are in the same, you know, sort of journey that I am. Same as you, right? Like we, we are surrounded by authors who are having all the same conversations. And one of the things is, and this is why I keep going back to what is the book and how are people consuming it? Like if you're a romance writer and a romance reader, you're not going to the bookstore. You're not looking at newspaper reviews. You're on your, you know, I, I know a lot of romance readers were like on their Kindle, they'll finish one book and they'll immediately buy the second. They'll buy an entire series. They're reading very fast. They're reading uh, on their yeah. devices. And same with thrillers. Thrillers are a big it, market for that as well. Much, yeah. But that is and not the fiction. same for certain commercial fiction, certain literary fiction. Well, rom romance, like the romance genre is indie's pretty much taking it over like it's pretty exactly. much has right if you're um, writing romance i would not even look at traditional because it makes no sense you want and especially if you can write and have and can build an audience which you can um and if you can write a little faster and get your audience the books that they want quicker that's the route i would take is i would just publish you yeah. know i would write as fast as i can publish as many books as i can get a series out and then on the basis of that build more like i wouldn't look at traditional because the traditional model takes too long for you to be able to take advantage of and it's also you're not competitive anymore i guess yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. A, you're just not you're just not yeah. like um again everybody every author can go through i think an important thing to understand part of me is the that every author can go their own pace you gotta make a decision what your pace is because there's a certain point there's a certain point where it's like it's unsustainable to demand like like six books a year or something like that maybe unless you are that good if you are that fast kudos to you but you're again this is the thing about the indie, the indie model is you, you can, can choose. play with you you can play with poor match you can play with different ways like i did a 200 page epic poem because I don't one, I don't think I could do that traditionally. Well, not this, not not through a big house anyway. And two, it was like this was how I wanted to tell the story. And I think one of the other things too, and I recognize this: if I'm the brand, this is something like, like this is a big part of this. If I'm the brand, what do I want people to know me? For? No, yeah, right. And in your like in your case. Actually, that is a great question for you because uh, like you've got so many ads, you've done so many things, right? Should I just call you the jack of all trades? I mean, because that's the that, master that, of all trades. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Master, <laughs> the, okay, Jack or Jacqueline the trades here because yeah, Jacqueline uh, of all trades. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, because you you're like me in the sense that you're an experimenter. I don't think we we experiment quite the same way, but you're you're one of those people that goes like, this seems cool. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do this. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I am easily bored. I really enjoy trying new things. I like a challenge, um, which means that once I've done something, I don't want to keep doing the same thing repeatedly. You know, once I re achieved a certain level of success with journalism, for instance, I was like, well, I don't, you know, because again, I'm not about the ego. I'm not about the awards. And, and you know, like I didn't have to be the best at everything. I just want to have fun. I want to enjoy my writing and I want to learn new things. That's what I'm about. And, you know, obviously support myself on the way and, just in, enjoy the process of it and so for me it's been and I feel like there's a lot of cross-pollination like I teach pitching for instance like if you learn how to write a good pitch it works for you whether you're marketing your book whether you're trying to get an agent whether you're trying to sell a story to the media whether you like anything it's the fundamental um did you have a question there no I just I'm nodding I'm nodding my head in agree I'm just I'm letting you go just so yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree no I totally agree with you 
Right. And so it's like, I like the cross pollination of ideas between different genres. Like once I started writing fiction, it absolutely informed the way I wrote nonfiction as well, because there was more storytelling, there was more kind of like, you know, taking the reader on a journey, which nonfiction doesn't always do really good nonfiction, like John Ronson does that super well. But it's like, it, it all kind of informs one another and I like that I like experimenting with that I like challenging myself with that this year I started writing short stories I just published my first one and and that's again like a way to see are people interested in the kind of fiction I write and you know asking somebody to buy a novel straight up can and I'm and I'm experimenting I'm trying to see if people like my short stories potentially is there a market for for me to then take this indie um and so, and also like audience building and also just playing around with it. So I kind of feel like, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity there. There's a lot of experimentation to be done there. I do like to do different things, which makes my brand not quite always as on point as I might like it to be. Because by the peop- by the time somebody discovers, oh, she's teaching journalism, I'm like on to novels or something. Yet, um, I feel that is why people find me and... Uh, stay on my newsletter and actually like what I do because it just shows them they don't have to like we don't have and you know I I I understand the the concept of brands but I don't necessarily like that I have to be a personal brand I just want to be like this work in progress you know where people can follow along with my journey and share along with my journey and bring their own stuff into it without me having to say this is who I am I'm complete now you follow me because I am this complete person and this is what I stand for. I'm like constantly evolving and you're following the journey of that, not necessarily the end product of that. I bet you, if we were to take everything you did, everything, we could find a common thread. Yeah. I bet you we could. We could. Mm -hmm. Common thread. In terms of the kind of work I do, or in terms of the way I approach it? No, no. no. Okay, so let, let's try it. Like, if I were to do you as a brand, like just, just, to, just not, not to put you in a box per se, but just to actually, like, how would I classify you? One of the things I've learned, about, and this is just me personally. Okay, everything I do. Again, we have a lot of things in common. I also bore easily. Right, right. I do a lot of different. I play. I play with more mediums than you do in terms of, but mm-hmm. you play with more styles of writing than I do because we both like, the, again, we're both interested in how we tell stories. We both are, have that interest. We just are chasing it in different ways. Yeah. So, but I was like, well, what do I do? For example, what do, what this show has in common with Isle of Zero, right? And this is what I, I a buddy reviewed it and it goes, I love this review. I sneak up on people, surprise them and get them to think. That is what I do as a podcaster. That's what I do as a writer. That's what I do even when I do video commercials. I want to sneak up, surprise you, hit you with, take your expectation. Yeah. Right. And then, right, right, surprise you and then get you to think about what I'm presenting to you. Whatever your conclusions are, are your own. I don't care. But yeah. what I but what I want you to do is when you look at something, you re-examine it in a different way, and you get a certain sense of renewal, or at least a reflection of what came about. That's what I'm trying to make you do with everything. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm I curious. Have. To, now I'm curious to hear what you think I do. You, um, so my theory with you is this: you, much like me, are an explorer, but you. Exp- but you're more interested, you're, again, you're more interested in everything you do is you are telling your story. And the thing you seem to care about the most with everything you're doing is um, your built is the road you're walking. You're all about the journey, whatever you choose to do. You're all about this, whatever journey you're taking on. And when you're teaching your writers, you're teaching them, you're giving them the tools to go on their own journey. Yeah. Right. That's what you're, that's what you're doing. When you're writing, you're writing, again, you're using your own journey to kind of reflect because we're, I think the one, the truly, okay, yes, we like experiment, we do something similarly, but I think the thing we both have in common with each other, we both are wondering where we're going. Yeah. 
you're not entirely sure where you're going. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going, but we both just kind of riding the journey. We both know what we want. We both know kind of what we want to do and how kind of how we want to get there. But we're not fully sure what there actually looks like. Because yeah. both of us have had our butts kicked. And we both know that that life's plans doesn't necessarily go according to plan, right? So that's what I think you and I have actually fully in common. What's different about, now we have a lot of things that are different about us, but that's our common ground. So that's why you and I have met, I think, more than anything else. Yeah. Is that right? Well, I think I think you're right about all of it. And I think yeah. I would take it one step further, which is what I like to do is, 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 this is what I like to do, is I like people to be able to see themselves in my work and be able to take that where it takes them, you know? So for them to be able to see well, empowerment, basically, for them to feel like they have choice, for them to feel like they have freedom, for them to feel like they understand that the world is not necessarily limited, and that they can, they can, they can make their own path. And and that's not necessarily just for writers, I kind of feel like when I do fiction, or when I do, you know, any kind of storytelling, I'm like talking to the 18 year old me in India, who feels like this is my life. This is how I'm supposed to like, I'm going to grow up, I'm gonna have to get forced to get married to somebody and have to live this particular version of this particular, whatever, um, life that is set out for me. And I want that 18 year old girl in India to know that no, she, that's that may be what they want for her, but that's not what she has to do. And to show her a way beyond that, you can take that to writing. That's what I show writers. Like, this is what the path is. That's what they tell us we have to do, but you don't have to do it this way. You can you can choose, you can be empowered, you can own your life. And I feel like the overriding, overarching theme of anything I do is just live your full life the way you want to. And I come up against the struggle there as well. Obviously, there's the yin and the yang. But, you know, it's, um, I feel like that's my overarching theme, if you will, for now. So, yeah, I'm sure it'll evolve. Uh, well, I don't know if it'll fully evolve. I think some of that will always be there. I think you're always going to be writing to that 18-year-old girl from India you were. There's always a little yeah. bit of that in your writing. There's always going to be. But dare I say it, that's your brand. Dare I say yeah. that that's yeah. dare I say dare I say that that if I'm marketing myself, that's what I would be doing. Whereas me, I'm like, it's like, oh, you think you got me pegged? Okay, let's let's have some fun with this. Yeah. Let's see what you're right. Yeah. And that's me. Yeah. Whereas it's, you, it's, yeah. Yeah. For you for you. you know, I, feel like, like, I feel like when people come into my world, they immediately know who I am. Yes. And you know, and they warm to that. They they're like, oh, I know who you are, and and hopefully we have some I'm surprised by how many and I always found this interesting because I always say I'm writing to that 18 year old Indian girl and yet like most of my audience is not Indian a large I think 50% of my audience is men you know and I find that super interesting because and I like that I really try not to talk to one demographic mm -hmm. um but you know when you picture a woman you talk in a different like I I've assumed that you know only women would respond to, especially, you know, the kind of work that I do. But I find it super interesting that I have a very wide audience. And that is why I feel like the the work that I do and the books that I write, I, I feel like I need to reach those audiences directly because I cannot explain to a publisher, um, and I have tried, why a white man in here in, in the UK would read my books because publishers do not buy that. It makes no sense to them, except I know that that is a core market for me. So I actually know why. Do you want to know why? Of course I want to know why. <laughs> because it doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. Everybody has come, comes to expectations. In the Western culture, yeah. small towns are notorious yeah. for this. Right. I've interviewed I've interviewed authors, some really well known authors too, who had to because they lived in a small town, they had a certain way of being. Everybody like you 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 have this expectation of what you're gonna be and and when you're younger especially or or you don't know any better one or the other, you try to fit that expectation. And when you don't, it's yeah. like what what the hell am I supposed to do? Yeah. Right. Right. What the hell am I supposed to do? And, and how am I going to do this? Do I keep living this life? I had a classmate when I was I was in a town in Snowflake, Arizona. He was gay in a very Mormon community. And he was going to hide that by marrying somebody in Arizona that 
was a friend, but certainly not for him a marriageable material. Not just because he yeah. was, not just because of where, uh, of, of what he was drawn to, but also just because personally you met them. It was like you, you two will kill each other. It won't, it won't be right away, but you, you will kill each other. It's like it's not something that fits for either of you, and this is not an uncommon thing with a lot of, like even to like no matter where you go what you that you are expected yeah. you are expected to play certain roles and be yeah. certain types and everybody and everybody everybody worldwide has these expectations now they're all different mm-hmm. no one has the same expectations but we all but, know the pressure and the the, yeah. the kind of like pushing down off that feeling you know i i totally agree with that and I think this is where I've had trouble with traditional publishing for instance is because I can't you know I think this is it's like traditional publishing wants to sometimes put you in a box it's like you're Indian and here are the kind of people who read this book and you know like I've had rejections saying well you know people in the UK and the US don't want to read about like India or this kind of like woman in India or whatever and it's like you're wrong because I know my readers they email me all the time mm-hmm. um but but that's that's the I think that's the challenge of mm-hmm. you know trying to convince a, an agent or a publisher to take you on um whereas if you're going to read us directly you're getting so much more of that um you know understanding of who the people are who are reading you I kind of sometimes say like all the misfits like just get attracted to me because I you know and again I'm very open I talk about mental health I talk about failure I talk about where I'm at I don't try to pretend that I'm doing better than I am and I feel like that resonates with people because there's so much bullshit out there that people are like no can we just can you just tell us what it is no no one wants to hear this I I mean everybody I think secretly everybody wants people to succeed at what they do but the honest truth of the matter is like like for me, okay, I uh, I'm at the point. It's almost I'm almost at a full time wage as a freelancer. I'm not there yet, but I'm very very close. But that still means I'm struggling, still going through ups and downs and ups and rights. But I again, I broke four figures. I'm gonna still I'm gonna stay there for the foreseeable future, which is great. I now love it. Just, we talked about this last time, and you were yeah. you, know, you were saying that this was your goal for this year. So well yeah, done to you. So, yeah. So um, that's that's ne- next year by springtime, I want to be like, okay, I can do this, right? I have a big mouth and who knew that my big mouth was the secret to my success, but that's okay, um, right? But but the thing is, right, it's a struggle because because it almost feels like when you're doing this is like, for, when you're doing this on your own, as a, the freelancer is like, you got to prove yourself. That's the big thing, prove yourself. How do I prove yourself? You don't give me a chance. You got to go through that hole and it yeah. drives you nuts. It drives you nuts. Um, but as a publisher, this this is the other thing I have about traditional publishing. They're looking for different voices, there, right? There's a claim, and you go and again. You're looking at, especially like young adult section. They're playing with different voices, but I I do I do feel the biggest opportunity I think missed by traditional publishing is the fact that a lot of these authors they've acquired do have their own audiences. They want that audience but they don't understand that audience. Absolutely. And, right. And that is a missed opportunity for a lot of traditional publishers. Yes. They're serving a engine. I, I always, I always, I kind of see traditional publishing as corporate. That's just how I describe it because it's just, it's easier for me to explain that if you're on your own, you're an indie, you're an entrepreneur. If you're working for a publisher, it's corporate. And then that's, that's how I kind of just treat yeah. it. It just, yeah. it, because it, 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 it fits the model. So, but the thing is, because it's such a large machine at this point, it's not about the details so much anymore. And those details are important because everything's diverting and de- like decentralization as a worldwide mm. trend mm. in everything is a real thing. Publishing yep. kind of got there first. And that's like you're seeing it. Like that's why I say traditional publishing is very much a niche now. Because they do not, at this moment in time, possess the tools to keep current with products. They don't have the speed. They're never going to have the speed, but they don't also have necessarily the understanding of where yeah. audiences are going, right? 
I, I think you're right, but also I think, and this is why I kind of moved away from the traditional versus indie conversation because it's yeah. like, well, traditional isn't one thing either anymore. No. So in traditional, you've got like the big four or three or however many are left now. You know, you've got that big corporate entity that you're talking about, but now you've also got small publishers who are taking on a very few number of books every year, but then are really putting marketing muscle behind them and, you know, doing yes. really kind of interesting um niche work and and hitting all the bestseller lists and you know kind of achieving amazing results with that and I think there are now enough players I mean I've seen one in the UK where they do a 50 50 split with the author so they do a very small advance or maybe no advance at all and they'll do like a 50 50 split with the author which is kind of entrepreneurial in that you know we share the profits but then we also don't do the traditional advance you know we'll pay you write the book we'll pay for the cost of publishing and then we'll have be equal partners in this uh, and so everybody's are, got skin in the game and so you know like yeah. th there are even within traditional publishing there are new models coming up it's just that when mm -hmm. we think of traditional publishing we think agents and big publishers because that has always been the model and i think that now doesn't necessarily make sense because those people have more to like they cannot take risks and they don't take risks because they have their bottom lines and they have, you know, the person, you know, who's making the buying decision, they have to turn a certain profit. Otherwise it's their neck on the line sort of thing. So they cannot take risks and the risks are being taken down below, but then you're not seeing big advances for them. You're sometimes seeing more struggle as it were. And I think the, the, the real point of contention for me with uh, traditional publishing in the end has come down to the fact that a lot of it has unfortunately centered around race and location of you know like the same story published by you know a, a different like a white person would have a, and this is I've had experience with this but I know a lot of people who've had experience with this is given more money more opportunity more publication whereas the same story by you know a black or a brown person um is not and and publishing is we all know this there's a class element there there is um you know there are a lot of problems with publishing and I think I got to the point where I was um finding myself quite depressed with all of it because it's like you know just if you can see, you know, like a lot of rejection I get is that we can't sell this in this particular market. I know you can because you're publishing somebody else in that, you know, and, and I think that's a wider conversation. But I do think uh, top of traditional publishing, the corporate traditional publishing is by definition cannot take risks because they have more to turn over. So. So, Okay. <laughs> We'll so my favorite, my, yeah. So the one of your comments, one of my favorite writers currently in traditional is N.K. Jameson. She's amazing, like really, really good. Black woman, does I almost guarantee she does not get anything close to what's to what she should be getting. I can almost guarantee it. Yeah. Um, and thing is, she's damn good. Like, I mean, I, 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 she did actually a Green Lantern comic. So I discovered her actually, and I started looking at some of her other stuff. It's like okay, you're actually really damn good, right? And just, yeah. just, she is. Like, she's one of the best in the business today. Fonda Lee probably has a similar story, actually. Fonda's really good. And it, and it's just like, they should be getting more money for what they're doing. And that's, I think not, I do, my own personal thing is, if you've gotten to that stage, you're probably still underpaid. It doesn't matter who you are, yeah. but I know especially especially like what you're talking about is a very real thing. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I'm not really that qualified to talk about that because I, I, I've never, again, me personally, and for my own personal journey, traditional publishing, I've gone to smaller presses. I've taken those chances. As, you, as you've said, the challenge with the smaller presses is for any author is this. Actually, it's true with any publishing press is what do you offer that I don't have, or I can't yes, get on my own. Exactly. And that's yeah. a very, it's a question that needs to be answered and a publisher has to ask that. But the other part I kind of want to talk about is 
I had this conversation uh, not too long Can ago. Can I just quickly interject there before you move on? I sure. want to say we should ask that question of everybody, including corporate publishers, because what are you offering me that I cannot do for myself? Are you, if you are offering marketing muscle and if you're offering, you know, sort of reviews and whatever, then are you actually going to commit to that? Or are you just going to say we're going to do it and then not do it? So I feel like that conversation should be had from with every agent, any business, you're going into business. Yes. When you go into business with anybody, including a top publisher, a top agent whatever you should ask them what they can do for you and whether it actually serves you or doesn't uh, and i'll add one more little detail i did an interview with a comic book creator who's now doing he actually has gotten his comic published on not advertised on national television because it's he's writing a graphic novel for for a wrestling company and one of the things he, he told me and this was a really cool thing was like okay if you do get to these big places right are they the audiences that serve you in the long yeah. run? So the answer is no, then you shouldn't be there. That's and I think really, really good. yeah, because it's, it's really good advice. It doesn't mean, yeah. right, everything has to serve a purpose, not just to the publisher, but for you. And you know what? Age, that's, that's so good because I think I've been kind of circling around that and never quite being able to articulate that. It's kind of what I was saying early on, which is I feel like my audience at the moment is what I imagine them to be is like the bookstore going, you know, newspaper reading audience. But is that actually the audience that serves me in my career? And that should I be looking at a different audience? And there, there you go. That Also, this yeah. is why very quietly I asked you, I figured out why. But very quietly, as I, I asked you what you feel you had in common with everything you've done, because mm. that's how you target your audience. Yeah, once exactly. You know what you, once you know what you do, it's easier to offer a service to do it, and that's um, that's yeah. just what I've learned as a free. That's what I've learned as a freelancer. So, um, it's 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 just a good now going for it. I think so. I had this conversation with with a buddy of mine not too long ago. I think the agent as we know it is going to go through a major seismic shift. Yeah. Because there are going to be a handful of agents still tied to the big four. But if you're not in that handful, unless you change what you're doing, you don't have a job. Well, a lot of agents are struggling right now. A lot of agents are finding it hard to because you have to sell in order to, you know, earn enough commissions and, you know, to keep your agencies going and things. And I don't think, you know, agents have to play the same, you know, agents are doing on a different level what we're doing, which is they're taking books they love and they're trying to sell them. If you don't have a sale, it's not just disappointing for the author, it's disappointing for the agent as well, because they've put in time and effort into trying to sell something that then possibly didn't sell. And, um, and I think it's getting harder and harder, because I think with the top publishing, like, again, the, the big advances, it's like, it's an all or nothing game. It's like, either you're gonna, um, get that big advance and that big you know book deal and then potential other deals which will come off of that or you know you're not getting you know or you're getting very tiny advances i think it's become like we need hits we need big books and and so any small books agents cannot afford to take on because publishers aren't the top publishers aren't taking them on and if they're small publishers then for an agent the commission is too low for it to make a difference so i think the whole industry is actually kind of at a point where financially you got to ask what the hell are we doing? It just doesn't make sense. Um, the snake is swallowing its own tail right now. You can see yeah. it. You can literally yeah. see it. You can literally see it. And um, again, it's, it's something, again, me personally, I'm just asking myself, all right, what would I do in traditional publishing right this minute? And this isn't, this isn't true for everybody, but this is just something, again, recognizing the signs of the times. When I look at an author like, say, Charles DeLint, mm -hmm. solid mid-sized author, and he's not in traditional publishing right now. No. That's telling. Very, very. Heck, even another one, Alana Andrews. She's not there. She's a New York Times number one. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of, yeah. Right. Do you know what? I think, and, and again, I go back to this point of, if we stop thinking about whether it's traditional or indie and say, what am I trying to do here? And what is the path to achieving that? And what I'm trying to do, for instance, if I'm trying to, you know, 
write a book in collaboration with my readers or something then it then traditional doesn't work like if I want to do a crowdfunding sort of thing where I involve my my readers and then traditional doesn't work if I want to partner with other authors and do book promotions and you know like kind of be part of that collaborative in a niche small 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 houses might work on that last one you just mentioned but that's it it's not that's a it. big, yeah but, but also but if I you know um if if I want to do kind of like you know throwing out their nfts or if i want to do serialization or if i want to like explore new opportunities then if i've signed a traditional publishing contract that takes away any chance for me to do that then i cannot for this particular book um do those things if they will not maybe they will maybe they won't but i certainly cannot even if they're not and i think if i were to sign a traditional publishing contract at this point I wouldn't sign away everything. So I don't think it's like traditional or India. I think it's both. Mm -hmm. What opportunities do I want to explore? And if somebody is offering me a contract, like a traditional publishing contract, then I am I losing those opportunities? And if I am willing to lose those opportunities, am I being paid well enough for, for me to give up those opportunities? Or am I just being, you know, like, am I just taking five grand so that I can feel like I have a book deal and I can hold my book and, and, you know, like, um, is it just an ego? I, I yeah, it's it, like, no, I, 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 um, I, Cause for so many, you know, for so many new authors, there is this like, Oh, my name on the cover oh, yeah. thing. It gets old very quickly. Well, um, well, 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 I was just gonna say, I had a really fun story because like one of the things I've gotten into the habit of as a freelancer is I will talk to the editors in chiefs. I will talk to these people if especially if, if I'm not hearing back from them like I should, right? And and, and there was like a question of how long you should wait to contact a publisher on a manuscript. I, I just threw in a magic number of three months. And I amended that slightly just because it was like, okay, follow their guidelines first. If their guidelines say something, follow that first and before you make any decisions one way or the other. And I got into this big fight with this one person who, who who's right now like like thinking it's like, I'm not doing this because I want I want to uh, like rock the boat or make extra noise. I'm doing this because I know how this shit works. I've I if I don't if I don't speak up, I might not get paid. I might not have even had been looked at. I want to yeah. get at least looked at, and if I don't get looked at, fine. I know that I can move on. I'm trying to save myself time. That's what I'm trying yeah. to do, right? Yeah. It's a simple. It, it's a simple concept, but. Again, you talk to someone that has the awe of getting that big deal, they're never going to look at it from that point of view. They're going to look at it from the prim and proper, how dare I disturb an eight? It's like, well, no, and I'm this is to... a real this is a yeah. real problem in our industry of like everybody is held up to su it's on they're put on such a pedestal agents and publishers that we don't even think of questioning them. It's like yeah. you know, if I have part of, you know, I've heard from it and this happened with me as well. Like if I I've heard from authors who you know, have agents who don't respond to their emails for seven months or something. And it's like, well, why are we in, if you're not going to answer my emails and we're in a business relationship, then we don't have a relationship. You're not my boss. But it feels like a lot of it is that they have power. And I, I do feel like it's a power thing is like they have power to get me published. They have the power to open doors for me. And so I should just shut up and accept what it is. Because otherwise I may, you know, I don't want to push back because then they, you know, I get blacklisted or whatever. And I think I reached that point where I was like, well, I'm not getting anywhere anyway. If you want to blacklist me, fine. But I, if I'm going to do this, it's going to be on my terms. And I've always with agents had a really good working relationship because I just ask for what I need. Um, most of them love that stuff. Yeah. It, it, but most editors love that stuff. It's, again, because they're human beings first and foremost. You're treating them like a human being, which is nice, right? Right, yeah. because uh, because I I don't know about you, I hate ass kissing, and it feels like if someone's yeah. like being different, it's like, oh god, I'm not going to get an. And also, I an author who can ask for what they need is probably going to be good at promotion and yeah. getting opportunities, right? Like, well, can we well, be able if you're going to be open, if you're going to be open enough to communicate with me, you're going to be open to communicate with anybody. Also, if I'm not being unreasonable about it, I'm just saying, hey, what's going on? That's a fair question. It's not like I'm asking it's for the moon. To ask, listen, 
we haven't spoken in three months. What's the next step? What are we doing now? What is the next play here? Yeah. And I think sometimes, especially when you're new, I've certainly experienced this as a new writer, where you're just afraid to ask those questions because you haven't yet learned to have your own back um, in a professional setting or any setting. But, but, you know, because you're like, well, they know better than me or they know the industry. I don't. But you know your career, you know your book. Nobody knows your book better than you know your book. And and I feel like an, an, a, an author should probably know their audience more than anybody knows their audience as well, because that is the key to it, no matter how you publish. If you know who your people are and you know how to reach them and you know how to speak to them in a way that they like, great. Then no matter how you reach them, they well, will keep responding. Well, yeah. And, and like I said, it's just, it was just an amusing thing because it, if I had done what they wanted, I would never have been paid in a couple yeah, of days. Exactly. Right, right. Right. So it's like, yeah, you're, 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 like, that's just, it's just a reality. It's shit happens, but also it's a business, like, right? Like yeah. if you sign the contract, um, yeah, you should know exactly. what's in it and what the repercussions of that are. If you sign away rights to, if I sign away global rights to a book, then that's it. I'm, that's, if they choose yeah. not to publish in Japan or India or wherever, then I have no control over that. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing too. You can ask for stuff and you should ask for stuff. The you worst I can tell you is no. And yeah. you're exactly where you were when you started. Did I have this to begin with? Nope. Did I ask for it? Sure. Did I get it? Nope. Oh, well, right. It's, it, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very real thing. I want to go back to the agent thing slightly because I think we were talking again. I think the future there for any agents listening to this and going, "How dare you?" No, we're not saying that. You're I love agents. I've got two. No, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I'm sure they're saying the same thing you are in the sense that what are we going to do going forward? And I think, I think honestly, again, I'm not doing a traditional versus indie. I'm just thinking, but where I think agents have a lot of potential money is they could be quietly guiding indie authors' careers because of all these new... Yeah, I oh yeah, some, some are moving in that direction, yeah. but I think it's going to be more of a trend because yeah. different niches have established themselves. Like, my agent has to be probably as crazy as I am in the sense, like, I'll be like, so what would it take to get my book as a video game? Because I'm yeah. not like, right, right? Because, yeah. I, that, that, because to me... That's the real bread and butter in intellectual property right now is games, right? It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean I that now that's not the only way to do this. I want to write a great book. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I just I I I'm looking, I gotta admit, I'm a little jealous of video games. They can do something I can't, that is that it can interact with the the people involved. And as good as a book is, a book can make you feel. I can't yeah. like kill zombies with the push of a button. I just can't mm -hmm. do it. I don't have that option in the book. So I just look at it. I just look at it kind of from the point of view of that's another medium I can take. The cool thing about any story is you can take a story and put it in all a bunch of different mediums and yes. tell the same story in different ways. And they're all awesome. And, yeah. and Actually, one of the things I'm, I'm starting to do is I'm starting to get put together friends like a musician and artist and you know like different you know mediums and just work on a single piece of like I write the story somebody comes up with the art somebody comes up with the music and then it's like a complete kind of immersive experience haven't thought this through yet but just liked the idea of being able to do that in the future that's not something you can do unless you're indie that's not something you can those are not areas you can play with and I do say play because it's just about having fun with some of these things and seeing okay I've got a story I've got I can indie publish it on Amazon whilst I'm also you know experimenting with all these like games and you know all these other technologies that are coming up I do want to go back to the thing about agents though and I think one of the things that I was very clear on and that I think I, this is what I highly recommend to everybody is kind of saying what do I want out of this? What is the best case scenario and asking for it? So when I tell people I have two agents, one's in New York, one is in London, it's like, how does that even work? Because, you know, aren't they, don't they represent your career? And, you know, I've had two agents before these two as well, and they did represent my entire career, which meant that if I came up with a new idea, then I had to ask that agent if they would want it before I could take it anywhere else. And so I didn't want that to be the case. I write fast now. I've got a lot of projects on the go and I don't want to be stuck kind of waiting for, and it takes them a long time to read. I understand they're busy people, but three months to read a book, I'm stuck, right? Um, 
so what I did was I signed one book contract, which means that um, we're on contract for this book. You can take this book out, you can try it. And, and with one of the agencies, I also have, had a time limit on that. So one book for a year, you have it. And, um, and then after that, it's back to me and I can do whatever I want with it. So I'm, you know, and I've now I've got those relationships. I can give them more books if I choose to, but I'm not beholden to any agent or any kind of one particular agency to represent me as a brand. Like they're just representing this one book. And I felt that that meant that I could then go indie publish my short stories if I want. I can, you know, I can, I can do whatever with other books. So I've got like, this is why I end up having like two books on submission and one going indie and one going like into crowdfunding and whatever, because I've got different ideas of how I want them to go and I can have different partners and that's how I feel about them. They're partners for this book. Sure. They're not my, you know, they're not, I think agent is a very loaded term because we feel like the agent represents me. The agent represents my career. It's not that anymore. I think Mm -hmm. this agent is my partner on this particular book and let's see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, we're, we're coming to a point where the thinking of how we've been doing this has to change. That's yeah. just where that's just that's just where As we're at. As an artist, mm-hmm. what is it in for me, like financially, in, in terms of readership, in terms of marketing opportunity, in terms of whatever? Like, how am I growing my career? Basically, can we ask this question? How are you going to help me grow my career? If you can answer that question, and I agree that it's a good method, then let's do it. Otherwise, no. Otherwise, I, I, I'm just wasting my time. I had this actually talk. So I, I got another collaborator I'm working on. So I'm do, I'm I'm creating a book design. It's going to be part Russian fairy tale, part Camelot, and we're just going to have some fun with it. And she's and she's the right person to do this with me with. And I gave her this a very similar advice in the sense that it's like because she's doing world class artist already a world class artist young yeah. age. She's way better than I'll ever be in all likelihood. Although I have gotten better since we've last talked. So I, I'm gonna show you before I go. Um, but the thing it the thing is, right? I told her standing like, "What do you want to do?" She, and, she, and she told me what she wanted to do. So, okay, then this is what you got to start putting yourself. Put yourself in that mindset, even if it's just slowly, because I get it too. As a freelancer, what your service is, right, is probably going to be your bread and butter initially to become that creative success, right? And you've done all this already, so you know this, right? It takes time, but while you're doing the create, pursuing the creative stuff, you make time for it. You're investing yourself in those places so that over time, people people go, oh, crap, you're good. Whenever that book hits, like, oh, crap, you're good. Yeah. And I mean, bet all that stuff you've done in the past and blah, 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 and boom. But that takes time. In the meantime, you got to kind of build your build yourself up. What else do you want to do creatively? And that's like that's where I'm at. I do video commercials. I can I have a big mouth. That That's going to be my service stuff. And then the writing creative stuff is, is my, let's build myself out that way. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But I'm always have this in mind when I'm doing stuff is the storyteller has to be served because that's who I want to be. Right. I don't mind the other stuff. I, it's definitely helped me with this as well. I can't like one thing we, we mentioned different writing styles, different art styles, definitely, definitely play a huge role in, in developing yourself as a writer. You get more tools and you learn more things doing, doing yeah. different things. But by the end, it's just, it comes down to the same advice at the end of the day. What serves you? And yeah. you got to make that time for yourself. All right. Whether it's traditional, whether it's indie, whether it's crowdfunding, whether it's, whether it's NFTs, whether it's, you know, video whatever, games, movies, and, whatever, whatever. Yeah what serves and I, and I you also, again this is this is why i can i also want to and I make the point that we're absolutely not saying traditional is not the right path for some people it is absolutely the right path is just go in with your eyes open understand what you're getting out of it and what the goals are just don't don't just assume that that's your only option and then go in and be disappointed because it, it isn't what ma- doesn't match up to what you thought it would be there's enough information out there now that you can know what the options are i, I think I'll, i think i'll say it like this don't do traditional for ego. I think yeah. that's the biggest. That don't is do the biggest. For it. Yeah. Yeah. That is the biggest mistake. People do self publishing for ego as well. Like they'll just have this book that they oh, have God, no idea. Yeah. No, it's market, a, right? This like, book it's, is amazing. Well, and by the but like, like I said, for me with the Alice, it's a very specific niche. Yeah. I'm not expecting a, I would love it to be a number one. The art on that is great, by the way. The, yeah. You know, 
yeah, yeah. no it's fantastic right now that's on purpose right i want people to the pop right but again i knew this going in it wasn't an ego thing i'm doing different stuff so i'm either going to hit up really really so i am taking a swing at the bat i'm either going to strike out or i'm really going to hit a home run there's going to be no middle ground with me and i accept that right that's not ego it's just that's that's just that's just that doesn't mean I can't find a readership in a niche along the way, but it's going to take some time. And, right? and actually, that is also one of the differences in that when we mm. when we think of traditional books or the way traditional publishing is structured, the book has a one week shelf life of like, OK, it comes out and then it has to be promoted during that time. And then it either hits the bestseller lists and does well or then it's done and we're on to the next title right as a traditional publisher whereas for indie publishers and people like us who want to explore different opportunities I could have published something five years ago and still bring it out into serialization today because you know there is no there is no one week or one month that I have to make it work it can be a long game rather than a you know launch process oh absolutely um but there okay so here's where traditional indie has something fully in common they're a backlist business yeah that's the reality. You, that's how you make the money. Yeah. That, that's, that, that, that's, that's always been where the money has been. That's why mm -hmm. classics get reprinted so totally. often in traditional. That's the biggest reason. They own it. They've sold it. They've constantly sold it. it. Never, ever gets old. It's there. Always has been. Always will have been. Stephen King, yeah, he loves that New York, number one New York Times bestseller list. But he cares about that far less than he cares about all the sales of all the books that came previously. But, you know, that's why they do the hardcover, then yeah. the paperback, then the, the, so that it gets like multiple chances to to yeah. get media and attention and press. That's right. And but it also makes sense too. we're the business of reselling our stuff. This is why I like that's that's the other big part of the business. You're not just selling it once. You can sell it again and again and again and again I think this is where sometimes the the trouble happens with mid-list authors now because i think when you're stephen king your backlist is very valuable and everybody's like the publishers are giving it attention but when you're a mid-list author who hasn't broken out in a huge way that backlist can go out of print that backlist can get neglected and this is where then indie can fill that gap I, I think this is one of those things where I would be fighting if I was a midless author tooth and nail with a traditional publisher on this is give me the rights to some of this. Stuff. Well, that's what that's what ends up happening. And this is why, you know, sometimes you see like these New York Times bestselling authors and stuff like moving into indie. It's because the backlist has fallen off and they just, you know, they they want to take control of it again. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, because there, again, that's where the money is. The money is never in the front. It's always in the back. And that's something a lot of authors don't understand unless you've done, like I've done six books. I need to do another probably 10 books before I really start seeing some money. Yeah. But yeah. at the same time, I will start seeing some money next year. I it grows start. with every book. I found yeah, that yeah. it grows with yeah. it, especially if you keep promoting. I think I've fallen off that promotion wagon a few times, but. Oh, oh um, we, we all do. We yeah. all do. We all do a little bit because you can't yeah. do it all the time. But. The business, no matter whether it's traditional or indie, is concept simple. You create a product, an intellectual property, you bring it out however you choose to bring it out. Yeah. And you constantly advertise. Yeah. That's the business. That is actually the whole business simplified. Understanding that anything you get along the way in terms of awards, again, I've gotten awards, so this has made it a lot. This is this has clarified this a lot easier for me. I don't have the ego trip anymore. That way, my ego is bigger in other ways now. But that's neither neither here nor there. Um, yeah. The the thing the the thing is, I don't. I rewards are nice. I can use them to help me build my brand better. Yeah. But but at the grand scheme of things, what I really care about at the end of the day is that people are listening to my podcast. People are reading my work. Oh, should I show you something yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right, Anita. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's right. It, 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 and, and that's, and that's what's, and that is becoming a much more of a normal thing. Hybrid models are the way, like I've been traditionally published. You've been traditionally published. Hybrid models are a very real thing. And for, for publishers and for publishers listening to this thing, I'm trashing. No, I'm not. The reality is the business reality of the situation, though, is you got to recognize what is going on in the market and you have to bring something that for an author, doesn't matter who it is, 
right? You have to have something that an author needs or is appealing to her. And now that doesn't mean that other things, there can't be other reasons for it, but there has to be a, there has to be something tangibly there. And we're at that age now where because technology has made it so I can go and publish my books, BookBub, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, like all these places. It means the traditional bookstore to book chain model. There's always going to be a demand for physical product. There's always going to be a demand for stories. There always will be. However, the methods of delivery and execution are changing and evolving rapidly. And if you're a traditional publisher, if you're especially a smaller one, take advantage of these and discover the new models because the bigger ones, they're not going to turn the ship anytime soon. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, all I care about is that authors feel like they have the the time, the energy, the money to be able to do the work that they love. Right. And then mm -hmm. the question mm -hmm. is, for me or for any individual author, what is the easiest, most fun way to get there so that I can continue doing what I want to do? It's it's not necessarily like, you know, if you take the ego and everything out of the way, I cannot keep writing more novels if, you know, at a certain point after I wrote my two is like, I need them to be read. Otherwise, who am I writing for? And, and as fun as it is to write by myself and, and I do write for myself, Someone um, needs to read it. I, I want people to read them and they, it kills motivation to have them just sitting there piling up like, Oh, I've got seven novels now that nobody's ever read. It just doesn't, it's not fulfilling. So how do I create a career yeah. that is fulfilling? Yeah. However, and, and and, and that's and that's a real thing. That's a very real thing. And 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 like I said, traditional as a model today, the, the the quote unquote traditional traditional model will say not 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 necessarily the smaller press. The big four, you, I guess. So four, three, I, I, you, 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 well, I have a bet it's going to go down eventually to the big two. But you, you can see it. The snake's devouring its own tail. Yeah. And what I mean yeah. by that is it's just they they are they are now consuming each other to stay yeah. afloat and. Which means the advances get bigger and bigger for the people at the very, very top. Um, you know, the authors who have their big audiences or who are already established and there's nothing in there for the person who is just starting out. Another thing, I don't know how long we have. Do we have we, we, another we, couple we, of minutes? We, 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 go, we, got, we got as long as you need. And then we'll, oh, we'll, so we'll four hours away. then. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. You know, one of the things is that people think that once you've sold one book to a traditional published like a publisher a corporate publisher that's the end of that road like then now you're done you can you know send them more books and now you're on a cycle but it's not if your first book doesn't do as well as they had hoped or if it doesn't you know hit the milestones they've set for it you won't get a second book deal so you're back to scratch so it's not it's not a done deal that once you've gone to a traditional publisher that they are going to continue buying your books and it is this is why we see a lot of people then leaving traditional and coming to Indies because, you know, I, I've known people who've sold three or four books to traditional sales haven't gone great with each additional book that they write. The publisher feels less invested. Therefore they put less money in, there's less marketing muscle, the books, you know, it's a cycle, right. And then the books don't do as well. And then it's all the author's fault because like their book didn't do well. So now we can't give them another contract. And so um, that is also reality. That is also reality in indie as well, except with indie, you can still write more you can still publish more. You can still keep going. And eventually sometimes you find that one book that resonates, you improve, but with traditional, it feels like after a certain point, if the publisher has given up on you, for many people that can signal the end of a career. Well, I i mean, here's the thing. I, I, again, I look at traditional as I'm only going to be there for a set amount of time. If I ever get into a bigger house, that's it's, I'm in for however long I'm in. And then I'm going to get like, I'm part of the machine. And in that machine, I'm going yeah. to go through that process. And there's going to come a time when I'm not there anymore. And yeah. that's just, that's just me being like a very, like, that's just reality. I'm not even trying to like, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's the beat. I think of it a little bit differently, which is that I'm going to keep doing the things until they feel good and right and profitable to me in terms of like whether it's as a business model, is it working for me? And at any point, if it stops working for me, then I'm not going to do it anymore, which is why I'm also now very careful to only sign contracts where I feel like I can pull out and have ownership to my work if I need to have it back because I've been in now this world long enough to know that if you know you always go in thinking oh we'll never part ways and then you part oh, ways yeah, and no, like, you Wait, will. let me read my contract <laughs> I don't know what I'm <laughs> talking no, you, you will yeah. that's 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 this is this is reality you will that's not a 
Um, but then you want to be able to have the rights to your book back. You want to be able to exploit um, kind of foreign rights. You want to be able to, you know, if you get an offer from another, um, you know, country, another publisher in another country, you want to be able to take that offer without having to seek permission from all the gatekeepers once again. So, you know, if, I, I feel like that's why I want to, that's why I don't think in traditional or indie, I think of, okay, what is it that I'm trying to do and how am I getting there? And then let's make sure I sign contracts and take opportunities that help me get there without hindering any part of the process, which and, of, and which obviously means that like, if you, if I were to get a traditional contract, it's probably likely that I'd be either negotiating very hard or not signing it because they do ask for a lot of rights that at this point I don't feel like I'm willing to necessarily give what's in it for you what's and also, in it for also the, here's the other thing I've learned this is what I've learned as a freelancer and I, I think this applies to every business not just writing but every business the more they pay you the more they value you oh, absolutely absolutely yeah. which is why and I've, I think I've said this so many times in the newsletter as well is like if you if they pay you like Ten thousand. It's not a. It's not a. Well, they they haven't invested in you. They haven't. I mean, it does depend on the genre and stuff as well. But again, I'm talking commercial fiction. If somebody invests very little money in commercial fiction, they're not really expecting a lot out of it. You know, they're not going to put in the the marketing effort. They're not going to give you the pub the publicist. They're not going to put in the time, money, and energy that you need for the book to be successful. And then when it's not successful, it'll be like, see, the author's book did not sell. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, to be fair, we have all these problems in India as well, like getting to readers and and whatever. Oh, oh, is. No, oh, oh, oh no, no, absolutely no. I I think, but going beyond the story, just for a second, and getting reading readers, it's about our it's the real what the real business we're talking about, not traditional, not indie. It's intellectual property. Yes, we've created something. We've created yes. something from nothing, okay. right? And the fact of the matter is, you can go outside every day. And you can see the value of intellectual property on the street corners, on billboard signs, in like restaurant logos. Intellectual property is absolutely everywhere. Yeah. And the business of intellectual property, the thing is, and I, I mentioned this very, very, very quickly. The real business of intellectual property isn't one sale. It's how many ways you can the sell. The Magic Bakery. I do know Dean Wesley Smith, right? Um, yes. Yes. So if, if anybody doesn't know, Dean Wesley Smith is this amazing indie author who's also published traditionally and then now moved into indie years and years ago. Um, but he has this book called The Magic Bakery, and he talks about how like this one piece of writing can be many yeah. many things you know it's like you you can make it into a, an audiobook you can make it into a serialization you can make it into an ebook you can make it into uh, an NFT whatever like so many options now that you can take advantage of and and you write it once and it, and then it because I used to do this as a freelancer right like I'd write one yeah. article and then I'd sell it to many different countries so you know you can sell country right so I'd sell it in like seven different countries and then you can sell it in different languages if you can get translation so sometimes like somebody in yeah. France would buy it or somebody in Spain would buy it and then they would translate it yeah and then you know sometimes it would sell as a radio story so you can take that one piece of work and then resell it multiple times and you make money from it multiple. yeah and and that's the thing you get it's called getting the work to do the work for you because again that constant pressure to churn out content like i'm always creating content with this show now this doesn't feel like work to me because i i have enjoyed my conversations and i'm really good at making an ass of myself it's fantastic but um Not today so far i'm still yeah, yeah. okay we'll, we'll, we'll get there we'll get there i'm working on it but give me four hours yes yeah. <laughs> four hours. it's gonna happen i might fall asleep at some point in this i'm sorry i'm sorry if that's the case just just don't try to say anything too offensive. That's all. I, I, I trust you, but I'm just, you know. But the, p the point is, this is not just a business of, hey, getting my book out there. That's great. It's That's one the way of doing it. Yeah, it's a good, right. It's great. It's also about, it's also about, okay, can I make a video out of this? Mm. Can I make an audio out of this? Can I make a game out of this? Can I make a t-shirt out of this? Can I make a cup? Can I make, now, not all of these things are going to be appealing to you. They don't have to be. The point is, and this is the point, what met, what appeals to you? What freedoms do you have to pursue these things? And, and depending on those goals, I mentioned this earlier, I want to turn, I make a board game out of my Alice series. Yeah. Why? Because I already have it in my head. 
do I want to go to a traditional publisher for this year? No. No. Simply because I'm going to make this game because there's some real money. I, I, I can see the money in that. And I and I don't need a publisher to do this in this particular case. I have an audience I think I can hit. And I think I have a big enough mouth to advertise that I'll do quite well with it. Yeah. Right? That's the thing. That's my decision. So I'm that's so that's the path I'm going. So for me, an indie crowdfunding path makes sense. Sense, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right? Well, I did this for my nonfiction as well. Like I have, you know, I used to well, I still do, but have this the website, The International Freelancer. So a lot of the articles there became the books, um, became also the courses. So the courses are video and you get support. The books are much shorter. You can just read them. Um, but it's all around the same content. I, I haven't like, you know, no. the, the blog posts became the books. The, the same thing became video courses, you know, um, with the courses, obviously, there's more support and there's more personal interaction, but, um, but you know, the content is basically the same. So if you want to buy a book or if you want to buy the course, it's totally the same. It's just that you'll have a different level of engagement with me and um, you know, and the, and the blog, you can go read it for free, but if you want it all put together in a way that is structured and makes sense, then you would buy the book. So, you know, you, I've used that content multiple times in many different ways as well. And it's like, and, and I make money from each Okay. sale right and if i'm not making money the free content it's bringing people into my world it's bringing people into my you know space and so it, it kind of all ties into each other yeah so what we're talking folks is a funnel system there yeah nice. right there is. that is what yeah, we're doing but i mean yes yeah yeah so, like, that is what it is you know you get but and that's where the backlist comes in because you get somebody who likes what you do and then they come into your world and they go and don't we all do this we like an author and you go oh i want to check out all their books and then you human. go buy you know their entire backlist and you read them it, it's it's a human thing it's not like it's like, like hey this person's on something or onto something i'm not sure which and i i like it so i want to see what they do and and that's that's yes. a very or maybe both. Hey, hey, listen, I don't judge. In this day and age, I don't judge. No. Um, but it, it, it's it's one of those things where you just recognize and realize that a lot. Again, this is something a lot of authors don't think about. My story is valuable here, yes, but it's also valuable in a lot of other places and not other things. So when you give those rights away, and this is something That's right, funny. right, you're actually throwing a lot of money away. Yeah. Right. Potentially. Yeah. So this is the business end of what we're well, talking about. This is about why here. you have to think like a business rather than yeah. just like an artist. And I do actually say like, write like an artist and sell like a business person because, you know, write like the artist that you are, like, don't let business infiltrate that. I mean, I know there's the whole right to market piece of it and, i personally yeah. don't I'm not a fan um I, I don't judge anybody who does that because you know good for you if you can write to market and make money well done um it's not personally for me so i kind of shut the door to voices and i just go okay what do i want to write what do i want to say how am i approaching the story and i just write what i want to write and then when i come out to sell it then i'm like all right let's write this pitch letter let's see you know what's in the market let's see what the com competitive titles are let's see who the right people are to help me on this journey and then I just get into business mode and I don't you know then yeah. I don't I separate the two basically it's like the artist in the studio the business person who's out to sell they don't necessarily need to mingle they're two different people they do mingle in one spot though this is I think where this is where businessman and artist here's here's kind of I think where they meet kind of have a compromise and that's this the artist I'm gonna write Alice in Wonderland as Greek mythology because Screw it. That's what I'm doing. Businessman's yeah. like, okay, cool. Have you thought about ways of doing this? Yes. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. That's that. That's that's where they meet in the middle a little bit. But then the businessman goes, I'm just going to shut up because here's the last, maybe most valuable thing. And then I will unfortunately have to let you go because as much as I, I enjoy talking to you, but I unfortunately I do. I got this. I got other contracted shit. I got to do. So I'm going to do that. I got to do that. Um, but the thing, but the thing is, um, marketing is also storytelling and it's also a big part of the hat. I think the artist has to, the artist understands you don't have to look at marketing as like this scary, I'm getting sales. No, it's nature of what you're doing. If you didn't believe in the work, you wouldn't freaking write it. So, so, so 
sell it like it's the greatest yeah. thing. Yeah, like it's absolutely. the greatest thing in the wor world. And that's what that's the thing. That's what the biz the businessman the business part of you and like we're, we're right into a format and right into a uh, is it's cool to understand the formula to get the idea of the expectations of some readers. But at the same time, I'm not going to buy a cookie cutter book, even romance books, which are probably honestly probably the more formulaic of the books out there even they have a lot of heart to yeah. them. yeah yeah yeah, yeah right. they have a ton yeah. of heart to them so what you really really want to do what you really really want to do is you got to find the story that appeals to you and tell it like only you can tell it mm -hmm. that is your best form of building a brand i'm the only person that did an epic poem of illustrations with alice you know what cool yeah, I'm going to stand out and that's going to be my brand going forward is I'm going to tell these unique stories that I'll hopefully surprise people who read them. That's my brand. I'm not trying to, I, again, will I be a number one bestseller? Probably not. And I'm okay with, I don't need to be. I just yeah. need to have enough people go, hey, your shit's really cool. All right. Are you as crazy as the books? Yes. And then we just get along. Right. And that's, right. And that, yeah, right? that's it. That's all I care about. I'm not, yeah. and again, this doesn't sound, and if this, if this doesn't sound like I've given up on dreams of being a best. No, I haven't. I'm just like, I'm looking at this strictly from a business standpoint of who am I, who will I appeal to and what's my goal? And that's, and that's it. I, I'm not mm -hmm. trying. And, and at this point, any numbers I get fantastic. I'm never going to be un disappointed that people caught on, but yeah. that towering Harry Potter hit. I'm not going to hold my breath on that either. I'm just going to be like, you know what? I'm yeah. just going to tell stories. Yeah. And you know, the last thing I'll say is that A, you can't predict that stuff anyway. It's not formulaic. Mm -hmm. But the but the other thing is I absolutely want to hit all those goals. I absolutely want to be number one New York Times bestseller. I absolutely want to be, you know, booker winner, all of those things. The, the, the thing that I realized this year after my experiences is I don't want to force myself into a box in order to get there. I want to get there on my own terms or not at all. But so, but I don't want to do like, I, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to change my books or, or, you know, change who I am as a storyteller or fit into any kind of box that the publishing industry would like to put me in just to get to those goals. If those goals come, they have to come on my I terms. Know. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that I can feel proud of them and not resentful or embarrassed that I actually changed who I was in order to get there. By the way, I need the last point. If you, right, this is her choice. If someone wants to change course. Oh, please can. do. Yeah. 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 Like, it, But then you'd be at peace with that, right? I think that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like be at peace with whatever choices you make so that when you get there, you're happy to get there, mm -hmm. you know? So that's where I'm at is like, I feel like I, I totally could have, gone away where put yourself you know just twist yourself this way or put yourself into this box and then we'll be able to sell you and i'm like no i don't want to do that i you know love me for me yes <laughs> no it actually honestly yes yeah that is probably the biggest i've interviewed hundreds of people dear god i've interviewed hundreds of people um you know um one of the things i i've learned is I can look at somebody and I can kind of see like, I can know sometimes just listen to them and figure out where they haven't figured things out fully yet. It sounds to me, if you don't have all the answers yet, you're comfortable with who you are at this point in the journey. And I don't yeah. feel you'd get in your own way. If that, I think that's actually probably the best thing I can say about you on this. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So you're going to do it and what you're going to, what you're going to do is going to be on your own terms and you're going to rock it. I think you And really I'm going to enjoy it. I think yeah. I want to enjoy it. I don't want to do things I don't like to do anymore. I'm too old for that shit. Too old for that shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Too old for that yeah. shit. Yeah. I'm no, turning totally. 40 on Friday. So yeah, totally. I'm, I turned 40. I turned 40 on uh, October 4th. Right. Well, I still have all my hair. It's a little grayer, a little bit, not, not, not ton. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, everything still works the way it's supposed to. I don't get sick. I'm healthy as a horse. Life's good. I'm, I'm very, very blessed that way. Now I just want to, yeah. now I just want to. Before we go, last thing, sure. I just want to say, so I sent out this newsletter saying that I was, you know, 
fed up of everything that was happening and uh, I was going to change direction and whatever. And I got this amazing email from you, which made, you know, um, just, do you remember this email that you sent me, which basically said, you were too polite to say it this way, but you actually just meant, what the hell are you doing? Uh, we all know that you're a rebel and you just need to go your own way. So could you quit shitting around and just go do it? That was kind well, of the gist of it. Well, basically the whole thing I was, nicer. well, I, 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 I don't need, you don't need to be mean. And also, I don't, something tells me if I pissed you off, I'd probably be a pretzel. Like, just like, I'd be, an, I'd be, <laughs> hey, look, what happened? Tasha, Tasha turned me into a pretzel. But you were very nice about it. Oh, well, not, not only that, it just some people just need that permission to be themselves. Like, I like, think you're right. you, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't because I already have it. I've given myself that permission. Yeah, yeah. But, but, I, you, but I think that there has been resistance there. I mean, we've talked about it even here. There has been that resistance there. And um, you were just like, just, just do it. Just get yes. over it and do it. Yes. And, I, and yes. I really appreciated that because it was like, you know, sometimes you just need to hear it from another person and just somebody to say, just stop doing what you're doing and get over to the other side. And well, I think you really were a piece yeah. of that. Well, I appreciate that. No, I just, it just, just sounded like you just said you were at that moment where you're like, this is the right thing, but what am I doing? Yes. Right. So what, <laughs> what, what am I doing? Yeah, cool right. And, and, and like I said, I made a decision a year and a half ago to kind of do freelancing. And the first year, there was that moment of what the hell am I doing? I kind of did some temp work and I realized I'm just not built for that anymore. I'm just, I'm not, I'm just can't do it. I, I don't yeah. have the ability. I don't have the ability to look at my boss as a boss anymore. I look at them as people that I'm working yeah. with. Right. And that's it. And the thing is, you can't intimidate somebody that that way anymore. No. When, they, when you mm -hmm. once you cross that line, you never go back. And yeah. so I ended up, so I ended up back where I started. But this time, it's like, no, I'm just going to do it. There's no like doubt. There's no self self doubt. And like I said, a couple things happened this year. I was zero one a one a nomination. I did it myself. I didn't do it with yeah. anybody's help. And I just realized I I'll can just this. fine. I can do this. Yeah. That's yeah. it. You can. Yeah. And, and you just felt you need that moment of somebody telling you you can do this and I yeah. was happy to do that for you yeah I think it was more of like we it know was. this is not who you are you're trying to fit into this like shitty little box and don't it, no because you don't want to be Arthur yeah. Conan Doyle Arthur Conan mm -hmm. Doyle is ever is the greatest successful that hated his life because mm -hmm. he he did not he grew tired of writing homes so he killed him yeah. Yeah. Right. And then he ended up having to go back to it. And, and he resented like like those the second half of home is like terrible stories. Yeah. But you could tell you could tell you just he was doing whatever he could to get away from it. You don't want that hell as as yeah. a creative. You don't want that hell. So no, no, totally. So, so this time, so you want to come back? You want to come back about a year from now? Kind of see how things go. I'll come back sooner because I feel like I'll have an update sooner. OK, you want to come back sooner? We can do we can yeah. definitely do that. So. Do you have anything right now that's out and wonderful and rocking? Well, I am looking at things in terms of publishing. I'm looking at things. Uh, so I, I don't have anything right now. Um, but I think I'll have some updates on that by the end of the year. So fingers crossed. Uh, I don't want to say it just yet. Um, but uh, yeah, my website, natasharalph.com. Uh, I send out, a, I was going to say daily newsletter, but I haven't sent it in two weeks. So maybe I shouldn't say that. But um, I I send out a regular email newsletter talking about publishing and options and I've started experimenting with things. So I'm talking about, you know, how they're going and yeah, I'll be the, sharing the, behind the, the scenes. There right. it is. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, stuff on the website as well. And um, yeah, basically if you want to check out my work, that's where it is. And uh, I will also be updating that website tonight because I've got some fiction out now. So I will be linking to that. So you can check out my fiction and see if you like my style. And if you do, well, then hop on over to the email list and I'll send more. And on that note, I will also say that she's probably one of the most authentic creatives I've had the pleasure of have, like, of all the newsletters I read, she feels the most authentic, right? The only other, right? Okay. So I, I really enjoy reading her stuff. She's got a great newsletter. She has some great writing, some good stuff. So definitely check her out. This okay. is her second appearance here. So I must be doing something right. So thank you for coming on. <laughs> Of course, anytime. 
So yeah. yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. And thanks for the encouragement. And uh, and hopefully next year will be the year of the book. Well, yeah. Hey, listen, yeah. look, I, I, I know this, like for you next year, this is my guess for you. I don't know how well your book is going to do, but I somehow feel I have my opinion is you are going to figure out how you sell your books best next year. That's kind of what yeah. I feel. That's what that's why I feel is going to happen with you. I don't know if you're going to be like, you know, like the big seller, if you'll get the sales you want the first time around, but you'll be like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try every crazy thing that worked to sell this thing. And we're going to figure out what sticks to the wall. And then your second book, you're going to fucking kill it. That's what I think is going to happen to you. Amazing. So, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. The first book, you might have a lot of four and five letter words and that's okay. It's all, it's all good. We all, <laughs> we all have that. So yeah, we're gonna make it luck. happen. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, cool. You too, and uh, we'll catch so I'm up. Just, I'm, I'm just wrapping this up. So if anyone wants to support this podcast, my my book is right there. If you want to see Alice pray croquet against Jason of the Argonauts, this is the book for you. I promise amazing, you. Huh? Yes, yes, amazing interiors too. Kenzie killed it. And like I said, if you like a little Alice in Wonderland poetry, this will be for you. Uh, you want to support this channel, twitch.tv slash just joshing podcast. My YouTube is Joshua Pentelaresco. Like, subscribe, enable notifications. Stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. And on Friday will be my 700th episode. It'll be a fun one. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Take care, everybody.